Chapter 6. Good pig. The very next morning, Farmer Hoggett decided that he would see if the pig would like to come when he went around the sheep to fly. I'm daft, he thought, grinning to myself. He did not tell his wife. Seeing him walk down the yard, crook in hand, and hearing him call fly, Babe was about to settle down for an after-breakfast nap, when to his surprise, he heard the farmer's voice again. Come, pig, said Farmer Hoggett, and to his surprise, the pig came. I expect it's because of what you did yesterday, said Fly proudly, as they walked to heel to gather up the hill. The boss must be very pleased with you, my dear. You can watch me working. When they reached the lower gate, Farmer Hoggett opened it and left it open. He's going to bring them down into the home paddock, away from the lane, said Fly quickly. You be quiet and keep out of the way. And she went to sit, waiting by the farmer's right side. Come by, he said and Fly ran left up the slope as the sheep began to bunch above her. Once behind them, she addressed them in her usual way, that is to say sharply. Move, fools, she snapped. Down the hill, if you know which way down is. But to her surprise, they did not obey. Instead, they turned to face her, and some even stamped and shook their heads at her, while a great chorus of bleating began. To fly, sheep talk was just so much rubbish, to which she had never paid any attention. But Babe, listening below, could hear clearly what was being said. And although the principal cry was the usual one, there were other voices saying other things. The contrast between the politeness with which they had been treated by yesterday's rescuer and the everlasting rudeness to which they were subjected by this or any wolf brought mutinous thoughts into woolly heads and words of defiance rang out. You've got no manners. Why can't you ask nicely? Treat us like muck you do, they cried, and one hoarse voice, which the pig recognised, called loudly. We don't want you, wolf. We want babe. Whereupon they all took it up. We want babe, they bleated. Babe, babe, babe. Those behind pushed at those in front so they actually edged a pace or two nearer the dog. For a moment, it seemed to Babe that Fly was not going to be able to move them, that she would lose this particular battle of wills, but, she, but he had not reckoned with her years of experience. Suddenly, quick as a flash, she drove in on them with a growl and with a twisting leap sprang for the nose of the foremost animal. Babe heard the clack of her teeth as you fell over backwards in fright, a fright which immediately ran through all. Defiant no longer, the flock poured down the hill, Fly snapping furiously at their hate heels and surged wildly through the gateway. No manners, no manners, no manners, they cried. But an air of panic ran through them as they realised how rebellious they had been, how the wolf would punish them. They ran helter-skelter into the middle of the paddock and wheeled as one to look back ears pricked, eyes wide with fear. They puffed and blew, and Ma's hacking cough rang out. But to their surprise, they saw that the wolf had dropped by the gateway, and that after a moment, the pig came trotting out to one side of them. Though Farmer Hoggett could not know what had, ca what had caused the near revolt of the flock, he saw clearly that for some reason they had given Fly a hard time, and that she was angry. It was not like her to gallop sheep in that pell-fell fashion. Steady, he said curtly, as she hurried down the rear guard. And then, down, stay, and shut the gate. Shepherding suited Farmer Hoggett. There was no waste of words in it. In the corner of the home paddock, nearest to the farm buildings, was a smallish fenced yard divided into a number of pens and runways. Here the sheep would be brought at shearing time, or to pick out fat lambs for market, or to be treated for various troubles. Farmer Hoggett had heard the old ewe cough. He thought he would catch her up and give her another drench. He turned to give an order to fly, lying flat and still behind him. And there, lying flat and still beside her, was the pig. Stay fly, said Hoggett, and just for fun. Come pig! Immediately, Babe ran forward, and sat at the farmer's right. 
his front trotters placed neatly together, his big ears cocked for the next command. Strange thoughts began to stir in Farmer Hoggett's mind and unconsciously crossed his fingers. He took a deep breath and holding it, Away to me, pig, he said softly. Without a moment's hesitation, Babe began the long outrun to the right. Quite what Farmer, had expe Farmer Hoggett had expected to happen, he could never afterwards clearly remember. What he had not expected was that the pig would run, run round to the rear of the flock and turn to face it and him, and lie down instantly without a word of further command spoken, just as a well-trained dog would have done. Admittedly, with his jerky little rocking horse, Canter, he took twice as long to get there as Flywood, but still, there he was, in the right place, ready and waiting. Admittedly, the sheep had turned the to face the pig and were making a great deal of noise, but then Far Farmer Hoggett did not know, and Fly would not listen to what they were saying. He called the dog to heel and began to walk with his long loping stride to the collecting pen in the corner. Out in the middle of the paddock, there was a positive babble of talk. Good morning, said Babe. I do hope I find you all well and not too distressed by yesterday's experience. And immediately, it seemed that every sheep had something to say to him. Bless his heart, they cried. And dear little soul, and hello, Babe, and nice to see you again. And then there was a rasping cough and the sound of Mars hoarse tones. What's up then, young'un? she croaked. What be you doing here instead of that wolf? Although Babe wanted literally to keep on the right side of the sheep, his loyalty to his foster mother made him say in a rather hurt voice, She's not a wolf, she's a sheepdog. Oh, all right then, said Ma Sheepdog, if you must have it. What dost want then? Babe looked at the army of long, sad faces. I want to be a sheep pig, he said. Ha <laughs> ha! bleated the big lamb standing next to Ma. Ha <laughs> ha! Be quiet, said Ma sharply, swinging her head to give the lamb a thumping butt in the side. That ain't nothing to laugh at. Raising her voice, she addressed the flock. Listen to me, all you used, she said, and lambs too. This young chap was kind to me, like I told you when I were poorly. And I told him, if he was to ask me to go somewhere or do something politely like he would, why, I'd be only too delighted. We ain't stupid, I told him. All we do want is to be treated right. We're as bright as the next beast we are. We are! chorus the flock. We are, we are. Right then, said Mum. What shall us do, babe? Babe looked across towards Farmer Hoggett, who had opened the gate of the collecting pen, and now stood leaning on his crook, fly at his feet. The pen was in the left bottom corner of the paddock, and so babe expected, and at that moment got the command. Come by, pig, to send him left, and so behind the sheep and thus turn them towards the corner. He cleared his throat. If I might ask a great favour of you, he said hurriedly, could you all please be kind enough to walk down to that gate where the farmer is standing and to go through it? Take your time, please. There's absolutely no rush. A look of pure contentment passed over the faces of the flock and with one accord they turned and walked across the paddock, babe a few paces to their rear. Sedately they walked and steadily over to the corner, through the gate, into the pen, and then stood quietly waiting. No one broke ranks or tried to slip away. No one pushed or shoved. There was no noise or fuss. From the oldest to the youngest, they went in like lambs. Then, at last, a gentle murmur broke out as everyone, in different ways, quietly expressed their pleasure. Babe, said Fly to the pig, that was quite beautifully done, dear. Thank you so much, said Babe to the sheep. You did that so nicely. Ta, said the sheep, ta, ta. It is a pleasure to work for such a little gentleman. And Ma added, you'll make a wonderful sheep pig, young'un. Or my name's not Ma. As for Farmer Hoggett, he heard none of this. So wrapped up as he was in his own thoughts. He's as good as a dog, he told himself excitedly. He's better than a dog. Any dog, I wonder. Good pig, 
he said. Then he uncrossed his fingers and closed the gate. Chapter 7. What's trials? Every day after that, of course, Babe went the rounds with Farmer Hoggett and Fly. At first, the farmer worried about using the pig to herd sheep. Not because it was a strange and unusual thing to do, which people might laugh at. He didn't care about that. But because he was afraid it might upset Fly and put her nose out of joint. However, it did not seem to do so. He could have spared himself the worry if he had been able to listen to their conversation. That was fun, said Babe to Fly that evening. I wonder if the boss will let me do some more work. I'm sure he will, dear. You did it so well. It was almost as though the sheep knew exactly what it was you wanted them to do. But that's just it. I asked them. No use asking sheep anything, dear, interrupted Fly. You have to make them do what you want. I've told you before. Yes, Mum, but, but will you mind if the boss uses me instead of you sometimes? Mind, said Fly. You bet your trotters I won't. All my life I've had to run around after those idiots, uphill, down dale, day in, day out. As for sometimes, as far as I'm concerned, you can work them every day. I'm not as young as I was. I'll be only too happy to lie comfortably in the grass and watch you, my babe. And before long, that was exactly what she was doing. Once Farmer Hoggett could see by her wagging tail and smiling eyes that she was perfectly happy about it, he began to use Babe to do some of her work. At first, he only gave the pigs simple tasks, but as the days and weeks went by, Hoggett began to make more and more use of his new helper. The speed with which Babe learned amazed him, and before long, he was relying on him for all the work with the flock, while Fly lay proudly and watched. Now, there was nothing, it seemed, that the pig could not do, and do faultlessly at that. He obeyed all the usual commands, immediately and correctly. He could fetch sheep or take them away, move them to left or right, persuade them round obstacles, through gaps, cut the flock in half, or take out one individual. To drench Ma, for instance, there was no need for Hoggart to bring all the sheep down to the collecting pen, or to corner them all and catch her by a hind leg with his crook. He could simply point her out to the pig, and Babe would gently work her out of the bunch and bring her right to the farmer's feet, where she stood quietly waiting. It seemed like a miracle to Hoggett, but of course it was simple. Ma? Yes, young un. The boss wants to give you some more medicine. Oh, not again. It's horrible stuff, that. But it will make your cough better. Oh, ah? Come along, Ma, please. Oh, all right then, young un. Anything to oblige you. And there were other far more miraculous things that Babe could easily have done if the farmer had only known. For example, when it was time for the ewes to be separated from their lambs, now almost as big and strong as their mothers, Farmer Hoggett behaved like any other shepherd and brought the whole flock down to the pens and took a lot of time and trouble to part them. If only he had been able to explain things to Babe, how easy it could have been. Dear ladies, will you please stay on the hill if you'd be so kind? Youngsters, down you go to the collecting pen if you please. There's good boys and girls. And it could have been done in the shake of a lamb's tail. However, Babe's increasing skill at working sheep determined Father Hoggett to take, Farmer Hoggett to take the next step in a plan which had begun to form in his mind on the day when the piglet had first penned the sheep. That step was nothing less than to take Pig with him to the local sheepdog trials in a couple of weeks' time. Only just to watch, of course, just so that he could have a look at the well-trained dogs working a small number of sheep and see what they and their handlers were required to do. I'm daft, he thought, grinning to himself. He did not tell his wife. Before the day came, he put a collar and lead on the pig. He could not risk him running away in a strange place. He kept him on the lead all morning, letting Fly do the work as of old. He need not have bothered. Babe would have stayed tight at heel when told. But it was interesting to note the instant change in the atmosphere as the collie ran out. Woof, woof, cried the flock, every sheep immediately on edge. Move, fools, snapped Fly, and she hustled them and bustled them with a little regard for their feelings. Babe, we want babe, they bleated. Babe! To be sure, 
the work was done more quickly. But at the end of it, the sheep were in fear and trembling, and the dog ran out of patience and breath. Steady, steady, called the farmer a number of times, something he never had to say to Babe. When the day came for the local trials, Farmer Hoggett set off early in the Land Rover, Fly and Babe in the back. He told his wife where he was going, though not that he was taking the pig. Nor did he say that he did not intend to be an ordinary spectator, but instead more of a spy to see without being seen. He wanted Pig to observe everything that went on without being spotted. Now that he had settled on the final daring part of his plan, Hoggett realised that secrecy was all important. No one must know that he owned a... What would you call him? He thought. A sheep pig, I suppose. The trials took place ten miles or so away in a curved, basin-shaped valley in the hills. At the lower end of the basin was a road. Close to this was a starting point, where the dogs would begin their outrun and also the enclosure where they would finally pen their sheep. Down there, all the spectators would gather. Farmer Hoggett, arriving some time before them, parked the Land Rover in a lane and set off up the valley by a roundabout way, keeping in the shelter of the bordering woods, Fly padding behind him and Babe on the lead trotting to keep up with his long strides. Where are we going, Mum? said Babe excitedly. What are we going to do? I don't think we're going to do anything, dear, said Fly. I think the boss wants you to see something. What? Well, they had reached the head of the valley now, and the farmer found a suitable place to stop, under cover, but with a good view of the course. Down, Fly, down, pig, and stay, he said, and exhausted by this long speech, stretched his long frame on the ground and settled down to wait. Wants me to see what? said Babe. The trials. What's trials? Well, said Fly, it's a sort of competition for sheepdogs and their bosses. Each dog has to fetch five sheep and move them through a number of gaps and gateways. You can see which ones. They've got flags on either side. Down to that circle that's marked out in the right fi the field right at the bottom. And there, the dog has to shed some sheep. What does shed mean? separate them out from the rest. The ones to be shed will have collars on. And then what? Then the dog has to gather them all again and pen them. Is that all? It's not easy, dear. Not like moving that bunch of woolly fools of ours up and down a field. It all has to be done quickly, without any mistakes. You lose points if you make mistakes. Have you ever been in a trial, Mum? Yes, here, when I was younger. Did you make any mistakes? Of course, said Fly, everyone does. It's very difficult working a small number of strange sheep in a strange country. You'll see. By the end of the day, Babe had seen a great deal. The course was not an easy one, and the sheep were very different from those at home. They were fast and wild, and good though the dogs were, there were many mistakes made at the gates, in the shelling ring, at the final penning. Babe watched every run intently, and Hoggett watched Babe, and Fly watched them both. What's the boss up to, she thought, as they drove home. He's surely never thinking that one day Babe might... No, he couldn't be that daft. Sheep pig indeed. All right for the little chap to run around our place for a bit of fun, but to think of him competing in trials, even a local one like today's, well, really? She remembers something he had said in his early duck herding days. I suppose you'd say, she remarked, that those dogs just weren't polite enough. That's right, said Babe.